Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards. I invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock every Sunday 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. Matthew 16 and the verse 16, please. When you find, say me amen. Say me amen. Amen. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, but Jonah, flesh and blood had not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I want to function more, focus more on the I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The name Peter means rock. Everybody understand that. But his name is only represented as just a small little tiny rock, as his name is called Cephas, meaning that that name represents a tiny rock. But Jesus Christ represents a big rock. Are you hearing me, somebody? The rock is so large. Big rock that Jesus said, I will build my church upon this rock. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now there are often times I hear people pray, pray like this, that I bind you Satan. No human being can bind the devil. Are you hearing me somebody? You cannot bind, when you speak about binding someone, that means you hold them and you tie them up or you chain them. You cannot bind the devil. You can bind his works, not him. So when he says, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus is the one who will, but for the moment, until that angel that is in control of the bottomless pit will bind him for a thousand years, otherwise he run freely. Everybody understand that? In the book of Job, the Bible tells us that Satan visits the earth frequently, up and down in the earth. And one day when he presented himself before the Lord, the Lord asked him, where do you come from? He said, I come from visiting the earth, up and down in the earth. He asked him a question. Do you see my servant Job? He said, yes. I always see him. But you know, I cannot touch him. And the question was, even though God would have asked the question, the answer was already given. I cannot touch him because there is, you place a protection around Job. So I can't interfere with him. You and I, if God does not place protection around us, we are dead people. He protect us in our car. He protect us in our homes. He protect us from being stinged by a scorpion. Three times in our room, a scorpion is just on my wife 
left side of the bed. On the curtain, on the floor, and as we walk to go upstairs in the other room, on the ground. Three times. And she's always to see them. Now, scorpion like to hide in shoes. They like to crawl up on your bed and hide. They like to do the impossible things so they can sting you. But thanks be to God that the angel of the Lord encamped round about us that she has the vision to see them before they sting her. Otherwise, she could have been sleeping in the night and get stung, not knowing what sting her. So Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We, um, I cannot build the church. All I do is to participate in what God is doing in the earth. He already built his church and continue to, to bring men into his kingdom. Are you hearing me, somebody? It doesn't matter how we look. God is bringing people into his kingdom for his purpose. Sometimes we get vexed when we recognize people not getting saved. Why are we vexing? Without the Holy Spirit, draw them, they cannot come. But yet he told us, go into the world and preach the gospel that men shall be saved. Peter recognized that. So he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. And he said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of God. Keys are given to believers. Now we can just bind something and out and expect it to just or command God for it to be just bound in heaven. It doesn't work like that. Already God already allow us the privilege thousands of years before we speak about binding and bonding. God knows exactly there are things to be bind and things to be bound. Don't think that as you pray right away, it just happened like that. God already knows that he's directing your prayer so you can believe that whatever is before you that is bind, he already bound it in heaven long before you pray. And whatever is to be loose, he will lose it. Do you know in the terms of what we, 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 we actually ascribe that to Satan? No, no, no. It's speaking about souls, men and women that has already been loose from the powers of darkness. Are you hearing me, somebody? So you can pray and believe God for your families to be set free from the powers of darkness. But you have to pray and believe God for it because remember, it's Christ building his church. You have to love and thank God for your family being set free from the powers of darkness so they can go to the same place you are going or we are going. We have to pray for our family more than anything else. Because when Jesus saved us, it's for our household. You know? Let's take, for instance, the man who the Galileans. The Bible tells us that he was on the other side, evangelist, tormented by a spirit. He has two thousand spirit as Luke would have said. Mark said two men, Luke said one man. But what Luke said, this one man have two thousand spirit. And when Jesus went over the lake, he went directly for him. And when he got there, he recognized the man. The man recognized him. He didn't have to say anything. Just as he end, he get on the shore, the man run before him and begin to worship him. And as Jesus received the worship, the demons in the man begin to worship and talk. Are you hearing me, somebody? The demons recognize they can't hold his mouth. Are you hearing me, somebody? So while he's worshiping God, here the demons and him, ah, if you come here to torment us before time, that's what you come to do. If that's the case, allow us to go into the swine. And Jesus asks, what is your name? We are legion. 
Because there are many demons packed up in this man. And all I'm hearing Jesus saying, this man is for my honor and my glory. So when Jesus set that man free, he said, go back and tell your household what good things the Lord have done for you. When we are set free and we are saved by God's power, is to tell our family how good the Lord has been to us. The church is not a man-made thing. The church is not wood and stone. This is a, just a temple or a house. The church is the people that gather together who are in one place, one heart, one belief in spite of your challenges. When person give up on their call or people or person begin to feel threat or being offended by simple little things, what will happen, they will find themselves in serious problem because see what happened? I did not call you, it's God that called you. And if God put you in a place to function and you're out of that function, God will deal with you. Oh, understand that? I remember when I came back from Bible school, it doesn't, be, it doesn't be good to be too zealous and to be able to do what you want. And when I came back from Bible school, Bible school, I am zealous. I want to go somewhere to do something for God. I didn't even pick Telekito because nobody wants to come to Telekito. New Testament church started in Telekito and after one year, it just squashed. Pentecostal started, they just squashed too. It's like the powers and the demons in Lekito does not want anything good to happen, especially in the Pentecostal arena. And when I came, I was threatened by people. We will see that you build church in Lekito. But I'm a Lekitonian. Are you here, me somebody? I'm born and grow here, right? You can't stop me. I begin to pray and say, God, I did not go on my own. You sent me. Are you hearing me somebody? You sent me. And not only me alone, he sent he to evangelist. He telling me to go up there and work with Basil. So he could do what he want. He hook, sinker, and line. No, Can't get away. Are you hearing me somebody? When God sent us to walk, I walk for him. We must walk. Forget about the challenges that are before us. Because if I study the challenges that are before me, I will not continue to do what I'm doing. I give up a long time. Are you hearing me, somebody? But God said to me, he said, no. The end of your journey will be greater than the start of your journey. Are you hearing me, somebody? He said, what? You have accomplished for me in this Tobago and beyond Tobago. Your rewards will be great. Are you hearing me, saints of God? People don't know when you're working for God. Don't be intimidated by what face you. But hold on to God and say, God, give me more grace and more strength to work for you. One man I told, one man I said, it doesn't matter where it is. I said, when I go anywhere and I hear, I see music, my ears just, just ring. Music just catch me anywhere you go. My ears just turn off to what they're playing. All I want to see is the boxes on them. To hear how loud they sound. So that I could match them. Because if the world thinks they're better than us. Are you hearing me, somebody? It is sad to know that when we go on the street as believers to preach the gospel, you can't even hear us. And the reason why you cannot hear us because we're in a little corner with two little speaker boxes and they're making more noise than anything else. And sometimes the mic's not even good and you're binding the devil. Most time, the devil have nothing to do with that. Either. One sister said to me, she said, Bishop, when the unsafe people, they come in the store to buy whatever they need to carry out the dirty work. He said, they're buying the best. When Christian come, they're picking up the cheap things on them. He said, because those cheap things they will sell, but not for the heavy work he wants to do. 
He said, but the unsafe people will buy their best because they want to maintain a standard. We as Christians must be able to do the same thing. Give God our best. Are you hearing me, somebody? Give him our best with our talent, with our money, with our strength. Because when you sit and you lie down, you cannot do nothing for God. Not one thing. Because when you're in the hospital, you're saying, God, give me one more chance. Though. When I come out, I will, go for, I will go to the east, west, north, and south field. When you come out, you're done with that. Amen. But I tell the Lord this morning, I say, God, all I want to do with the people that you have given to us is to do your perfect will. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's to do what your perfect will. Is somebody hearing me preach today? It's to do what? To do your perfect will. And the Lord said, don't let numbers fool you. Remember, I am building my church. Sometimes it does hurt. To know the people that you know that you don't see them anymore. You ask yourself what's happening. But hear what happened. God has a way of just maintaining himself with his people that he has chosen. He chose 12 disciples. And then he appointed 70 men. Are you hearing me? Out of the 12 disciples he, cho he have chosen. One betray him which is Judas Iscariot. Next one deny him. But hear what happened. Out of the 70 disciples he have appointed, he sent them out two by two and said, and the Bible said they came back with great joy and they were excited and they said, even the devil and the demonic spirit was subjected to us. And Jesus Christ said, don't rejoice because demonic spirit are subjected to you. Rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. So then you can cast out demon. You can do all kind of things. But if your name is not written in that book of life, you can't go to heaven. He said, make sure your name is there. Are you hearing me, somebody? I am seeing simple little things that are offending Christians. Not supposed to. You watch them too hard, you've been offended. You don't say nothing, you've been offended. Why? And the Bible said, woe be unto the man on which offense have been taken. Let's take, for instance, John the baptizer. He spoke about Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God. In a matter of fact, he said, the one whom you see the Holy Spirit light upon, that's the one. He is the son of God. John saw that. John baptized him. But when pressure take John in prison, hear John. Take two of his disciples and go see. Ask Jesus if he's a Christ or do we look for another? Hear John. So they went to Jesus. John sent us with an important message. He said, you go back and give John this message. Tell him the deaf hear, the dumb speak, the blind eyes open, the lame walk, and the dead raise. Go tell him that. But John did not remember that he said to Jesus, I must decrease, you must increase. So John had to die for Jesus to continue his mission and go to the cross. Because if John was alive still, he would have been continuing baptizing people. And they would have followed him. And the two ministry would have clashed together. Are you hearing me, somebody, today? Ministry or not to clash. Every human being are called and given a function position. Ministry can be clashed when you compare two people together. Do not compare me and evangelists together at no time. The reason why you cannot, con the reason why you cannot place us in the in the same category because we learn from two different schools. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? The Holy Spirit is the one that teach. What he would have learned and continue to minister and speak. The Holy Spirit would have taught me. Would have encouraged me. And then I would have come and teach because he had never gone to a Bible school. But we need to give him 
God thanks and prays for him for executing the word of God as he do. Let's give him a good clap offering, please, somebody. So most time we think people have to go to Bible school to be very instrumental of preaching the gospel. Sister Natasha, I've never gone to a Bible school either. And when you hear she deliver the word, you know it's only God and the Holy Spirit can give you revelation like those. They all learn from me. I learned from Pastor Kenneth Sammy and from many different people that I went to Bible school with. Are you hearing me, somebody? But when the Holy Spirit have a mind to teach you, because we have not chosen him, but he have chosen us and ordained us, that we must go and make disciples of men. The greatest call is not to sit down in the pews and do nothing. The greatest call of God is to go by the byways and by the highways and to preach and to teach about the goodness of God because he's coming sooner than we think. So the church wasn't built because of the disciples stay in one place. If they were negligent, the church would have been stifled. The church would not have been advanced because he left them on the earth with the legacy to go out and make disciples of men. That's what the church actually is about. When we receive all the information here, we're supposed to be on the street like the Jehovah Witnesses. You insult them, they're still coming back. Think about it. You tell them you have your religion, they're trying to win you over. Why? Because that's how they've been trained. To go out there daily and to share what they have in their magazine. But they well learn their magazine. So if anything is not in their magazine that you will want to tell them, they tell them we're coming back next week. You know why? They go into their high heads and say, you know, I had a challenge outside there. What is the challenge? This person asks so by so by so, what do we do? Is either I will tell them go back, or oh, so you're too young, leave them alone until they grow a little more. But for the Christian brethren, I want to let you know when the Holy Spirit teach you truth, you don't have to be afraid of the drunkard, the gambler, the curse brother. Those who are possessed by spirit because the word of God from your mouth is going to hit them like a sharp to a sword. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who will speak through you so men can come to him. Are you hearing me, saints of God? Are you hearing me? We need to understand the time in which we are living in. So Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. You can bind some stuff and behavior pattern of man, and you can lose them from that position. Go before God on their behalf. You've seen them. God sees them. You know? you know what Abraham did? Abraham recognized he needed to go before God for Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham prayed a prayer that was very interested in him. He says, let not me take this upon myself to speak upon you, Lord. And he said, Lord, if there be this amount, would you destroy it? And he take God from 50, just imagine, from 50 right down to 10. Are you hearing me, somebody? And when Abraham reached the 10, he said, Lord, this is the last time I'm speaking because 10 is a number that you're supposed to have above 10, which is 12. You see, 10 is man numbers, eh? but 12 is God's number. So if Abraham come down to 10, 12 is the minimum he was supposed to go to. But he dropped through your Lord and 12 and said, Lord, if there be 10 righteous, would you destroy it? You see, God is remembering the 12 tribe of Israel. God is remembering when Moses, um, when Elijah repented the altar. He take 12 stones that represent the 12 tribe of Israel. God is remembering in the river Jordan, 12 stones were placed there. And they hit them up. So the minimum number that Abraham could have gone is 10. Two less than 12. And God still said, 
in a Gedan. Out of a million something people in a Gedan. Why did they have homosexuals take over the land? Just in Guyana, in Jamaica, here in the, some ambassador, some person that went across there, he gave Jamaican people they vex. Some dignitary from where America going across there, gay. They vex. Are you hearing me, somebody? Diplomat, they call them diplomat. Homosexual diplomat. When they come into your country, in the order in which they need to crop our country. Are you hearing me, somebody? Remember, his people choose them to become their leaders. And I'm saying if everybody rise up against their behavior, they cannot practice their nonsense in Ghana. The Ghana president said, no homosexual in our country. We're going to kill them. America wants to pull sanction on them that if you're not accepting homosexual, then you, you, you're out of our ties. Ooh, tell America they have power. Don't you know that scripture does not recognize America as a, as a world power, but as a superpower? It's just time for America and brethren. Anytime you start to dictate God's pace, all them, let me not say what person got to say. Uh, <laughs> Prescott said too much a nice name for them. He said, what homosexual is calling them? They're not homosexual. And Prescott just called them raw. Yes. He said, they're not getting respect for themselves. The spirit of the homosexual has been ravishing our land. Some of them secretly, even in the Christian fraternity, they're there and they don't know who they are. Is that Christians who are homosexual from the time you watch their behavior and you watch their walk, you know, they're homosexuals. They were that before, when you think they really, really change, some not change. I see my Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invites you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock every Sunday 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network